Hello, I always come to you with great excitement in my heart. <laughs> it is part four. It's part four of our um, sessions on strengthening, encouraging and comforting. And uh, so I just want to bless a few people with what I've heard the Lord say about them. And uh, so we're going to have great fun. But before we do that, I just wanted to read something from Marilyn Hickey and Sarah Bowling's book. It's called Know Your Ministry, and it speaks about the spiritual gifts, foundational gifts that we have. And uh, I was blessed by it. I've I bought this book a number of years ago, and I always refer to it. It has blessed me tremendously. And it's helped me step into the gift and the calling and the plan and the purpose that God has for me. Um, I believe that my strongest gift is exhortation. And uh, so that is why I'm doing these broadcasts. So that I can exhort, encourage, strengthen and comfort those that need them. And so today we are going to do some strengthening, encouraging and comforting. But let me read something from chapter 2. It speaks about the gift of prophecy. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. And that's found in Romans 12 verse 6. And so Marilyn says, when many people hear about the foundational gift of prophecy, they immediately ask, isn't this the same gift as prophesying? The gift of the Spirit described in 1 Corinthians 14. No, it's a distinct gift because according to 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 5, every believer can prophesy. I love that. A person with the foundational gift of prophecy may also prophesy since the prophesying function of building up, cheering up and stirring up Another version says strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. See 1 Corinthians 14, 3 complements the gifts. Let me just read that passage to you again. A person with the foundational gift of prophecy may also prophesy. Since the prophesying function of building up, cheering up, and stirring up complements this gift. So awesome. So all of us can prophesy. All of us can strengthen, encourage, and comfort. And I think in the last session, I spoke about the fact that our gifts are to profit others. They are to be blessed with the gifts that God has given us. Amen. And then we also know that Paul says, pursue the gifts. And so that is what I've been doing. I want all of the gifts of the Spirit. And the nine gifts as words of wisdom, words of knowledge, discerning of spirits, faith, healing, signs, wonders, and miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. Those are the nine gifts of the Spirit. And we can pursue them all. So whenever people need them, if they need a word of wisdom, may we be the ones to impart to them the words of wisdom as the Spirit gives to us. If it's words of knowledge, let us be the ones. If it's to prophesy, let us be the ones to prophesy to those that need them. Amen. We're going to start off. The first uh, encouraging word I have is for grace. And so grace, I have a picture of you going uphill. But it seems like you are just moving so, so slowly and uh, feels like you are not reaching the top. And it seems to bother you that you are learning things at a snail's pace. But I have an encouraging word for you. I sense the Lord just saying to you that slow is good. Slow is okay. This is time where he's just building or laying foundations 
This is the time where he just wants you to grow stronger in him. I sense that he wants you to grow deeper in him, have more intimacy with you because he loves you and he wants to direct you. He wants to take you places you never dreamed possible. So don't get pressured by the fact that you are moving so slowly. It's part of the process. I wish I took it slowly. I wish I waited more for the Lord. I wish that I had spent more time in intimacy with Him because then I would have experienced things that He wanted me to experience at the right time. I felt that I put too much pressure on myself to grow in Christ. So where He's just saying, Mercia, take it easy at the right time. You're going to step out and do what you are called to do. I said that the Lord also wants us to enjoy Him. And I think if we first enjoy Him and we first experience great intimacy with Him, where we actually learn to hear from Him and then obey what He says um, we must do, uh, things will just um, explode in our lives and uh, we will experience much more peace, much more joy. But we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Whereas God is not putting the, the, so much pressure on us. And so I sense the Lord just saying to you, don't try and rush the process because you are doing great. God loves your consistency and determination to keep going. And even though you are impatient, you want to get it right. You want to honor God. You want to please Him. So you are doing what God, God has called you to do. And so the scripture I had for you is found in Philippians 1 verse 6. It's a scripture that I love. But I want to read it to you from the Passion Translation. And it says, I pray, this is Paul, with great faith for you. Because I am fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. So grace, that's a really great word for you. So slow down, stop putting pressure on yourself. Know that God is rooting for you, that he's with you in the process and he's going to do amazing things in you and through you. Amen. That's a good word. And so I have a word for Chantal. Chantal, I just sense that you are anointed. So don't doubt the gifts and the calling on your life. Your gifts are going to change the world around you. People are going to be inspired. They're going to be encouraged. Your gift is needed. It is necessary for you to step into all that God has for you. I sense the Lord just saying to you that you are not here by accident, but by divine appointment. And that before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you and he created you for a great purpose. And the same purpose that he had for you when he created you and formed you in your mother's womb is the purpose that he has for you today. Um, I sense that the Lord's just saying to you, I've been with you from day one and seen and seen everything that you've gone through and I've never left your side for a second. You are mine and I am so pleased that I created you for such a time as this. And then I was reminded of my favorite scripture that's found in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says, I alone, God alone knows the plans that he has for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to bring about the future you hope for. And so I just have a sense that the Lord is saying to you, I've got you. I'm going to do amazing things in you and through you. You just keep going. Bless you, Chantal. May this encourage you today. And know that God is rooting for you and that he loves you unconditionally. Your future is bright, so don't look back. Keep looking ahead. The change you desire is the change that you can expect. Be blessed.
And then Sophie, Sophie, I was excited when I received a word for you, but I also thought it was such a weird word because as I started praying for you and I saw the word Sophie, I thought of a sofa. And what does a sofa do? <laughs> you sit in the sofa, you relax, you unwind, you get comfortable in a sofa. And um, I see you sitting down while reading a book or maybe you're knitting, but you're doing something with your hands. And uh, I have a sense that you don't enjoy sitting around doing nothing. You're actually very impatient with yourself. You want to be busy all the time. You love being busy with many things. But I have a sense that being busy gives you a sense of worth and purpose. But I believe in this season, God is calling you away. God wants you to quiet down. God wants you to chill and just relax in this season. And if you would just learn to sit in that chair of yours, don't lift a finger, but calm down, relax, put your feet up and listen. I sense that the Lord is about to share with you secret things, mysteries, and give you clear direction for your journey ahead. So even like I'm sitting in this chair right now, I sense that the Lord wants you to just sit there. You know, and if it takes 10, 15, 30 minutes, an hour, he just wants you to sit back and relax, not lift a finger because he wants to speak to you. I sense the Lord just loving fellowship with you, intimacy with you. I sense that you're also going to know things before it happens and uh, the Lord can trust you. He can trust you with many things, Sophie. And so he wants to impart to you. I also have a sense that you could be a really great intercessor. And so some of the things the Lord wants to reveal to you is things that he wants you to intercede about. Um, God needs us to intercede. God needs us to pray. And I sense that as you pray and believe God for great things, they are going to happen in your life. I sense that uh, because he loves you, um, you also know that you can trust him as much as he trusts you. So I was reminded of two scriptures. The one is found in Psalm 64 verse 10. And it says, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him. And all the upright in heart shall glory. That's a great scripture. And then Psalms 119 verse 105. Your word, Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So I sense that God just loves sharing things with you. He's going to share openly what's on his heart for you. And he wants you also to openly, openly share what's on your heart to him and he will grant the desires of your heart. You are amazing. Be blessed and be encouraged today. And so I have a word for Tama. Tama, I sense that you are beautiful on the inside and out. People are drawn to you by your beauty, your honesty, your kindness and generosity. I also have a sense that people have mentioned to you that you are so beautiful and that's a good thing and you should receive it. I think sometimes you shy away from the fact that you receive so many compliments, but the Lord wants you to know that you are beautiful inside and out and God loves that about you. You are always on God's mind and lips, so don't forget it. And so I was reminded of the scripture um, found in Isaiah 52 verse 7 it says how beautiful upon the mountains of the feet are the feet of him or her who brings good news who proclaims peace who brings glad tidings of good things who proclaims salvation who says to Zion your God reigns and so I just have a sense that you always look for opportunities to share the gospel of peace. Many hearts are encouraged because you share the good news of Jesus with them. 
I sense the Lord loves that about you. And he touches their hearts. So many times people won't say a word when you encourage, when you strengthen, when you motivate, when you inspire. But the Lord wants you to know that he sees. And those words that you speak, those encouraging words, when they inspire others, it actually seeds that you are saying. And when that happens, he can produce a harvest in their lives. So hearts and lives are being touched by your generosity, by your encouragement. So keep going. He loves that. He loves that about you. Um, you are making a difference. I sense the Lord wanting you to know you are making a difference. So bless you for spreading the gospel of peace. You doing what God desires for you to do. That's a good word. Be encouraged. Be blessed today. And then I have a word for favorite and favorite. So I have a picture of you driving a car. And you are driving along and you just having a fun time. Time, I sense that you know the direction that you need to go in. You are motivated to keep going. You know that the places that you need to go to. I sense that you are confidently moving forward. And you know that God is with you and you are on a journey. And so you also carefully consider your decisions and check in with God on the direction you need to take. I sense the Lord just love how you check in with him and you carefully obey his promptings. I sense God wants you to know that where you are is where he wants you to be. The hardships you endured has not come from God, it's not from him. And he also wants you to know that they are never wasted. We learn through the trials that we go through. And I sense that you have um, learned so many things through the trials that you have gone through. I also have a sense that the Lord wants you to know I've seen it all. I've been there with you. And I'm going to restore what the enemy has stolen from you. And you can also expect a sevenfold return from the enemy because of what he has stolen for you. So be expectant that things are turning around for your good. You're stepping into a season of change and much freedom. So have fun and enjoy the next season. Genesis 8.22 was something that came to mind. And it says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. That's a good scripture. You know, it's a reminder to us that summer, there'll be summer and then there'll be winter. There'll be autumn and then there'll be harvest. And uh, so that is important. So all the seeds that you have sown over the years will produce a harvest in your life. So remember, seasons do change and that God loves you. I trust this encourages you today. Be blessed. And then the last word I have is for Maputle. And Maputle, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I'm always so careful or afraid to, to uh, pronounce names, especially if I, I don't know exactly what they're supposed to sound like. So be blessed and encouraged. And overlook um, the wrong pronunciation. So I just had a sense and I saw a picture of a jersey. And now what is a jersey all about? I said, Lord, what is a jersey all about? We know that the jersey keeps us warm um, and it covers us. And then I was reminded that jersey is normally made of wool. So like sheep, I'm reminded of the scripture. Who we get? Who from sheep, sorry. And so I'm reminded of the scripture found in Luke 15, verse 4 to 7. It says, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. 
And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. I just love this passage of scripture because I remember that I was one of those sheep that was lost and how Jesus came and he found me. He pursued me and he brought me back home. And so I get to sit here and just, I'm just blessed. I, I have extreme peace and joy because Jesus found me. So I have a sense that you have been praying for a lost loved one. And the Lord is letting you know that he always goes after the one lost sheep. And the Lord wants you to rest and relax and trust God to keep his promise. God loves that one more than you do. I don't know if it's a male or female. God has heard your prayers and he has answered it already. So be expectant that it will manifest and that one will come home and experience Jesus in all his fullness and all his glory. You be expecting that that's going to happen. So just rest. No, you've prayed those prayers. God has heard them. And God wants to do a work in this person's heart and life. You have done all you needed to do. You have sown seeds of goodness. You have been generous. You have been supportive. And they are producing a harvest of good fruit. And so I was reminded of Galatians 6, 7 to 9 for you. And it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And this is it for you. Let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And so just saying to you today, God loves you and uh, he is rooting for you. He's heard every prayer that you prayed. Uh, I'm reminded of the scripture right now that says, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open for you. And you have done all of those things and the Lord has heard and uh, you are about to receive the promises that he made to you. And so rest, rest knowing that God is faithful. He who promised is faithful. I trust this encourages you today and blesses you. And remember that God loves you. And so thank you for joining me today. Um, if you enjoyed what I've just done today by strengthening and encouraging others and you want to receive a personal word from the Lord, I take it really seriously. I pray for the individuals and I ask God to please give me a word that really comes from Him. Um, if I've made a mistake, it's not God, it's me. I've not heard correctly. And so I want to encourage you, if you want to hear uh, a personal word from the Lord and be encouraged and strengthened and comforted, um, just leave me a comment and um, just leave your name. Don't give me too much details or don't give me details at all so that I can just hear from God. And then uh, in the next video, I will share with you those words and I always let I always let you know that I'm you the video is coming out so you can please like subscribe on YouTube and leave me a comment be blessed be encouraged know that God loves you he's rooting for you he wants to do a new thing in your heart and in your life God is a good God. Have a really great day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.